everyone. We're at Ocado's newest automated warehouse here in Andover. At full capacity, this facility processes over 65,000 Ocado.com orders every week. The technology inside makes up part of the Ocado Smart Platform, a new solution created to power the online grocery retail business of retailers around the world. Today we're going to see some of the most advanced robotic systems and software ever created for online grocery and meet some of the people who make it a reality. Let's take a look. Behind me sits a grid containing hundreds of robots. Together they work as a giant goods to person system, bringing crates of products to our personal shoppers who can then assemble them for our customer orders. We've invited Paul Clark, a Cardo CTO, to give us an overview of this automated fulfillment solution. So Paul, there are multiple teams working on the software state for hiring the system. Could you tell us a little bit more about what they do? Sure. So the first thing we did before building this facility was to build a, a detailed mathematical model or simulation in order to work out the algorithms and the control mechanisms that we would be using here. Uh, and then we set about work uh, creating uh, effectively the air traffic control system that orchestrates the movements of all these bots as they fly around, uh, very much like a real uh, air traffic control system would. Then we had to write the firmware uh, that actually resides on the bots themselves that controls their movements. Uh, and then the, we, the rest of the automation software that controls the other machines that uh, are in this facility. Uh, then we moved on to the uh, warehouse management system itself that takes incoming customer orders and turns them into actions that these robots perform uh, and basically orchestrates the operation of the warehouse as a whole. And then with all the data that comes from these machines, we, we send some of that to reporting systems uh, that provide operational reports uh, for the engineers and uh, managers who are running the site. Uh, and then other um, data exhaust is sent up into the cloud and there we're creating machine learning based analytics to look after these swarms of robots, effectively to provide their healthcare. So how do the teams work together to build the solution? So, well, all of these teams I've just mentioned, they're part of Ocado technology and we build all of the software that powers Ocado's end-to-end e-commerce fulfillment and logistics systems. Um, and we use agile processes and, and uh, Kanban and other such te techniques in order to collaborate between the teams uh, and to be both aligned but also to give the teams autonomy in terms of what they're doing. Did you face any challenges along the way? Sure, so in moving from our first generation warehouses where we have many engineers perhaps looking at SCADA screens, you know, looking after the health of the, uh, of the machinery, here that's completely impossible because literally we have thousands of robots swarming around and so right from day one we decided to send all of that data to a data lake in the cloud and to, to effectively to automate uh, the oversight uh, of, of those robots. To spot, for instance, if a particular robot, its battery pack needs servicing or if, if its acceleration or deceleration has changed in some way. And that's important not just in one warehouse, but we're going to build loads of these around the world, both for ourselves and our platform customers. And therefore, we have to adopt a scalable solution on day one. Thanks, Paul. Right. Now we're going to take a look at the software controlling the system. The robots are managed using a real-time control system, similar to those used in air traffic control. Alex manages several of the teams working on the system. Alex, what can you tell us about the software stack powering the robots? So the low-level control systems on the bot are developed in C. Uh, the high-level control systems uh, are developed in Java. They're responsible for processing information from the bots and tasking them around the grid um, to satisfy business requests, whether it's inbounding stock or picking customers' orders. Uh, the software itself is run on OpenStack or service provisioned with OpenStack using Ansible to configure the servers to allow easy rollouts and rapid rollouts of environments. Uh, we uh, upload our logs to Ceph, which is long-term storage for us, and the data analytics get uploaded to BigQuery, allowing us to investigate uh, in the future. Amazing. You mentioned OpenStack. How do your dev and infrastructure teams collaborate? Our collaboration is about uh, working together but allowing each team to um, satisfy their own requirements. So, for example, we use OpenStack uh, to provision our environment and that allows uh, us to disconnect from the infrastructure teams that are maintaining those environments. And similarly, we use Kubernetes as a containerization service to, uh, 
to balance our applications and allow us to, to not care so much about the underlying infrastructure. And then finally, how does a project like this go from idea to reality? So this has been in making for about five years, just over five years. So for the first year or so of that, um, it was a purely academic exercise. It was generating simulations, looking at the algorithms we needed and the hardware we needed to design. Uh, after that, we had to start building the hardware, develop the communication mechanisms. And then after that, it's uh, turning it into a production system, making it robust to uh, satisfy the customer orders we need to. But throughout, actually running testing and running simulations to ensure we meet the throughput requirements that we have. Thanks for giving us an insight into the system. Now we're going to go and discuss the wireless system the robots use to communicate. You may be wondering how we're able to control the robots down to millimetre precision. Well, in order to communicate with the robot fleet, Akado Technology designed a new wireless communication system using 4G technology. Adam and Green and his team were instrumental to the development of the new system in collaboration with Cambridge Consultants. Adam, what can you tell us about the new wireless protocol? Well, when we were looking at potential solutions for providing communication to all of these robots here, we looked at all of the modern technology that are available to us, and we realised that there'd be a capacity constraint if we were to use any of them. So what we did was look at the most cutting-edge physical layer technologies available, develop a, a proposal for that, and then chop off all of the higher-level protocols that support them and develop our own. So in our physical layer, we use orthogonal frequency division multiple access, which is a real mouthful and hard to say on camera. Um, but what that means is instead of using one very strong signal with all of our data in it, we spread that data out over many sub smaller subcarriers. Okay, so we're obviously in a giant metal box. Mm -hmm. What challenges do you face when deploying a system like this? That we are in a giant metal box, um, and there are pros and cons. The pros are that we're somewhat isolated from the outside world, which means we get a clean slate to design any wireless technologies that we need. On the cons, the problem is that we have an awful lot of metal work here, which provides a very harsh RF environment. And what we do to overcome that is that we have an, a multi-layered approach. So to begin with, our FDMA is, is a good solution for that problem. But secondly, we have a very complex and sophisticated RF equalizer and also some error correction technologies which help us recover the lost bits from the signal as it bounces around the warehouse. And then on top of that, um, through our work with Cambridge Consultants, we've been designing um, a very high quality RF chain. And what that means is, I guess the analogy is that it's like watching a film on your smartphone, but it, it probably works most of the time, but it's nowhere near as good as being at a cinema. At the cinema, they have good sound systems because it's crucial for their industry, as are good wireless technologies and arts. Amazing. What applications do you see this technology having? I think any application where hundreds or even thousands of devices need a reliable real-time connection is uh, ripe for the picking, as it were. For instance, the, um, there's, a, there's a lot of focus at the moment on autonomous cars and communication between cars and infrastructure or cars and other cars. So you can install just one of our base stations to cover a set of traffic lights, for instance. And as cars arrive there and announce their presence, you would be able to monitor the flow of traffic and adapt your phasing of those traffic lights accordingly. You could then install that at a number of junctions, which then allow you to manage traffic in a whole smart city. Another application, actually, is that you could, because our technology uses unlicensed bands, it's far easier to install in a car and take it with you. And then you can have a peer-to-peer -peer communication system in a rural location where there's not necessarily good mobile coverage. Thanks for giving us an insight into how the wireless system works. You're very welcome. Now for our next step in the tour, we're going to go and see one of our automated picking stations. We're stood in front of one of our robotic picking stations, designed and developed in-house. What can you tell us about robotic picking and the future of robotics here at Ocado? So picking groceries is very different from picking other kinds of items. We have to contend with 50,000 different products with all sorts of different form factors and then we have to pick and pack them into carrier bags with all the kind of visual occlusion challenges that presents. So for us really it's all about the underlying grippers, vision systems and machine learning to control those systems. And this is just one of several different strands of robotics that we're working on at Ocado and 
uh, what, what harmonizes those is a set of competencies that when we acquire them in one area, we can then apply them to another. And indeed, that itself is part of a wider journey towards us becoming an AI-first organization. So we've heard about Ocado's next generation robotics research, but what can you tell us about the manufacturing process? So here it's a collaboration between Ocado Technology and Ocado Engineering. And Ocado Engineering are responsible for working with our external manufacturing partners to actually build these robots and then we provide the control software and the uh, embedded firmware uh, that makes the move and uh, one of the things that's special about this facility is that really at the heart of it there's one kind of machine that we're learning to design, manufacture, evolve, support and maintain uh, which leads to significant economies of scale. And finally, what makes this whole system better than anything else on the market? So it, it has a whole range of different kind of USBs. Um, uh, one of them is that it's scalable. You know, you can, if you're a, a customer of ours, you can start small and, uh, with uh, uh, your, your grid and then add more robots and bins uh, as your requirements grow. It's massively redundant. It's very parallel. So they, these robots, they, they collaborate in a swarm-like uh, behavior to be able to pick a 50-item typical customer order in, in just uh, a, a matter of minutes um, and uh, then we are, con well, if you like, providing the sort of the automated healthcare for these swarms of robots uh, in the cloud in order to be able to uh, monitor and support these facilities all around the world. Well thanks for showing us around today, it's been great to get a glimpse of how these systems work first hand. If you're interested in finding out more, subscribe to the Ocado Technology YouTube channel and follow us on social media for regular updates.